Hi everyone, hope all of you all are doing well. Uh, we'll just wait for a second more and then we we'll start with our uh, session or a live. Atish, am I audible? I am live right now. Okay, so we don't have anyone who's joined in yet. Let's wait for a second and then we start. Okay, let's start. Hi everyone, my name is Himali Malavia. I am head nutritionist and head of hormone and thyroid vertical with Team Luke. My today's topic is on thyroid and PCOD. So, well, a few days back, I had asked on Instagram where uh, is thyroid and PCOD interrelated. There were many of you who said yes, but there were many who said no. So, all those who said no, I would want to break that myth of yours. Yes, there is very much a correlation between underactive thyroid gland or different thyroid disorders like Hashimoto's and PCOD. Okay, so today in my live, I'm going to uh, speak about how are those two related and what is the correlation. Uh, okay, so one question you may get in mind is, is thyroid related to PCOS and vice versa? So we have seen many cases, like there was a time uh, in 2018 and 19, wherein most of the cases that we were getting, uh, middle-aged women between the age of 30 to 45, they always had um, like, you know, hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's and it was coupled with PCOD or irregular menses. So yes, there is correlation and um, let's see how. So before we go ahead and understand the correlation between thyroid and PCOS, let's understand what is PCOS. Let's understand what is the thyroid disorder that can impact PCOS. So firstly, thyroid disorder when we speak, uh, PCOS when we speak about, its full name is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So what is this polycystic ovarian syndrome? It is a syndrome in which our body, so in our ovaries produce eggs, which like, you know, which are small or immature, which eventually mature. And uh, if they fertilize, you get pregnant. If they don't fertilize, then uh, you may get menses. Okay, this is how our body functions. But when we talk about PCOS, in this condition, because there is hormonal imbalance, uh, what happens is this eggs do not mature and instead they get converted into something called a cyst which are fluid filled sacs and it has been observed that you know uh, two in every 10 young girl or a middle-aged woman ends up suffering from PCOS. So what all are the hormones that play a role out here? Estrogen, progesterone, LH which is luteinizing hormone, FSH which is follicular stimulating hormone and testosterone. These five hormones play a crucial role in determining whether one will get PCOS or not. So the levels of these hormones play a crucial role in PCOS. Okay, so that was uh, PCOS. And whenever there is hormonal imbalance, like your body is not producing enough progesterone or your body is overproducing uh, estrogen or if there is less estrogen produced or if the ratio of LH and FSH is deranged, or if your body produces high FSH levels or if testosterone levels in your body increases, in female body increases, then it can impact uh, the maturation of that egg and hence it will impact the period cycle resulting into formation of sac, fluid filled sac in your uterus uh, which is this condition is called as PCOS. Now let's understand thyroid. So where, well, there are various types of thyroid disorder. I will focus on two right now. One is hypothyroidism, which means underactive thyroid gland, which clearly means that our thyroid gland is not producing enough thyroid hormones, which is T3 and T4. Okay, so T3 and T4 levels are less and TSH, which is thyroid stimulating hormone. Now that is not produced by our thyroid gland, but by our brain. So TSH is a hormone released by your brain, which gives a message to thyroid gland that please start producing T3, T4. So because your thyroid gland is not producing enough T3 and T4, uh, their levels go down and TSH levels go high. So that is hypothyroidism. 
uh, and now let's understand Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is a autoimmune thyroid condition in which our body attacks our thyroid cell. Our immune system attacks our thyroid cell as a result of which our thyroid organs, our thyroid gland is not able to produce enough thyroid hormone T3 and T4 leading to underactive thyroid gland. Okay, so uh, this is what is Hashimoto's, this is what is hypothyroidism and I hope you've understood what is PCOS. So, well, now my, your question is how are they interrelated? So, when we talk about thyroid and PCOS, so hypothyroidism, it is said that when one is suffering from hypothyroidism, what happens is it impacts the testosterone levels. That is the level of testosterone in our body, androgen in our body, in female body increases as a result of which it can lead to PCOS. Another thing that uh, with respect to hypothyroidism that we have observed is that during hypothyroidism, uh, hy thyroid I call it as a master gland which gives details or uh, instructions to other organs, bodies and for, uh, it also controls release of various hormones. So when you have underactive thyroid gland, that means T3 and T4 levels are going to be low. As a result, uh, basically thyroid plays a role uh, or it gives a message to our endometrial lining of the uterus that please release estrogen. So if you have underactive thyroid gland, then uh, you know T3, T4 production is impacted as a result release of estrogen is impacted so your body is not able to produce enough estrogen since it does not produce enough estrogen what happens is it uh, maturation of eggs does not take place since maturation of eggs does not take place that egg becomes gets converted into sac and which is something leading to pcos so that was hypothyroidism and pcos now let's see correlation between Hashimoto's and PCOS. So what is Hashimoto's? It is uh, nothing but autoimmune thyroid condition in which our immune cells attack the thyroid gland. Eventually T3, T4 production is going to be impacted. But one more thing with Hashimoto's is that when you are suffering from Hashimoto's, there is inflammation in the system. More the inflammation, it is going to impact estrogen, progesterone, testosterone levels leading to uh, impacting the maturation of excel and it can lead to pcos second thing apart from that that i may want to speak about is with hashimoto's uh, the tpo levels that is thyroid per uh, peroxidase enzyme uh, levels are high tpo is an indicator that one is suffering from autoimmune thyroid condition condition so tpo levels are high okay in hashimoto's but you know what during if anyone is suffering from PCOS we have also observed that TPO levels are slightly high so need not necessary one is suffering from Hashimoto's but this is the correlation another thing when one is suffering from uh, Hashimoto's is that the prolactin levels increases okay and since prolactin level increases uh, it also impacts uh, the testosterone levels it also impacts the uh, estrogen levels which in turn impact in increases the inflammation in the system and hence it's going to impact the maturation of egg and one more thing is i spoke about lh and fsh these are two hormones basically which play a crucial role in maturation and menstruation or maintaining pregnancy etc maturation of eggs or maintaining pregnancy but you know what when one is suffering from Hashimoto's uh, when one is suffering from hypo uh, Hashimoto's this LH to FSH ratio is deranged now this deranged LH to FSH ratio impacts the release of estrogen from our system hence it leads to 
uh, it impacts the maturation of egg and hence it can lead to PCOS. So, well, this is how there is a correlation between PCOS, hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. So, anyone who has inflammation in their system, you may want to check on your thyroid gland and you may want to correct your lifestyle because otherwise it's going to impact your hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, LH and FSH and which in turn is going to impact your uh, menstrual cycle. Now, let's understand what are the common symptoms between PCOS and underactive thyroid gland may be Hashimoto's or may be hypothyroidism. Uh, one is fatigue unexplained weight gain then uh, chronic uh, hair loss or hair loss per se dry skin excess of hair on face growth of facial hair low bmr gaining weight these are few common symptoms which are observed not only with pcos but they are also observed with hypothyroidism or hashimoto's now what causes this uh, erratic lifestyle uh, what causes this uh, disorder one is erratic lifestyle, then there is excess of intake of junk and processed food, wherein your meals are not balanced, there is not enough vegetables, there are not enough antioxidants coming from uh, fruits, not enough, uh, what to say, excess of intake of sugar, protein, not enough intake of protein, uh, there is some chronic stress, there is insulin resistance, so all of this together can lead to uh, can cause or impact Hashimoto's or hypothyroidism okay or can lead to PCOS also for that matter now what will you do what are the remedies that one can follow to maintain Hashimoto's or to maintain uh, to take care of Hashimoto's hypothyroidism or uh, PCOS first and foremost thing is taking care of gut health it's very very important to take care of gut health so if you are not sleeping on time if your intake of junk or processed is more if your intake of sugar is more if you are not intaking if you are not taking enough fiber please start correcting that apart from that you can also have a good probiotic which will actually help in taking care i mean which will help in uh, taking care of your gut health and it also plays a crucial role in balancing t3 t4 tsh estrogen progesterone levels so having a good probiotic is very very important what you can have rice kanji kefir kombucha sarkrot beet kanji fermented pickles these are few uh, probiotics that one can have to take care of gut health next is take care of your liver health because processing or conversion of t4 to t3 or uh, metabolism of estrogen progesterone testosterone takes place in liver so one needs to take care of your liver health what can you do to take care of your liver health ensure that you are not getting exposed to too much of uh, pollutants but take good nuts and seeds like brazil nuts walnuts etc which that will help you in taking care of your liver health so no probi a good probiotic no junk and processed food no sugar ensure that you are resting well physically and emotionally so just before my live i have the consult wherein the girl was doing everything but still had pcos and the reason was she was not mentally at peace because she had gained weight so taking care of a good probiotic i mean taking care that you are resting well is absolutely absolutely important uh, apart from that uh, ensure that you are not resting so much that you are you are having a sedentary lifestyle ensure that you are active throughout the day clock 10k steps now you may have fatigue you may not feel like being active so what can you do at least start walking do surya namaskar do some pranayama breathing exercise etc because that's going to take care of activity and it will help for sure apart from that try and lose weight for that one simple tip is follow the lifestyle flow which we had already shared on our instagram you care page follow that flow have balanced meal ensure that you are sleeping on time have a good probiotic so arun here is asking me what is a good probiotic good probiotic uh, means any fermented food product uh, like kefir kombucha uh, sarkrot beet kanji fermented salsa or indian pickle but which is not loaded with oil and salt 
so all of these are good probiotic and if need be you can reach out to your healthcare practitioner and as for a good probiotic supplements as well there are many 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 that are available on mark in market apart from that have half teaspoon of ashwagandha and half teaspoon of licorice together at bedtime in warm water that will help in taking care of your gut health and it will help you in calming down and uh, it also tries to like you know acts as a muscle relaxant so it will work on your stress as well uh, for all those who are suffering from hashimotos or hypothyroidism start taking 1 teaspoon of virgin cold pressed coconut oil 35 i mean 45 to 60 minutes after your thyroid medicine and it works wonders also one concoction that uh, i have been using it's my personal favorite is turmeric dry ginger and tulsi so make a concoction of that and have it it will definitely definitely uh, like you know uh, have it in the morning it will take care of the inflammation and hence it will take care of your thyroid health okay so this was me himali malavya uh, talking about hashimotos hypothyroidism and pcos and the correlation between the three okay uh, i hope you have uh, i mean i hope this session has helped you thank you all for joining uh, secondly in case you have any queries with respect to all these three you can reach out to me on my instagram handle which is himali malavya and i'll be happy to address your queries take care have a great day ahead